Okay guys, uh, welcome to my very quick whistle stop tour of Lightroom. Um, I'm using Creative Cloud 2015, um, I think is possibility, no, it's 2015. I think the other apps have updated to 2017 that this one appears. Maybe there isn't an update 2017 or certainly not yet. Uh, should be the same as in the labs. Uh, for the sake of the video tutorial that I'm recording here, I have limited my screen resolution to 720, which means it appears a little bit cramped, as you can see. So you'd normally have a lot more space um, than this probably um, in the central area here. But effectively, I'm going to show you um, around Lightroom. Now, just <clears throat> to forewarn you that in Lightroom, uh, within the labs, occasionally we have had some issues where it starts up and it gives you an error message about the catalog. Um, don't panic. You can ignore the error message and I would always begin, which I'm going to talk about now, um, by suggesting that you create a new catalog for each um, time you use it or for each project. Okay. Uh, I know that it's quite attractive, the idea of having one catalog with everything in it but it tends to dramatically affect your efficiency, it affects the backup time, and it also means that you can't back up the catalogs as efficiently. So personal preference is each time I work on a new project, I will create a new catalog. So what I'm gonna do is just in case you're in that situation, I'm going to show you within Lightroom, say new catalog, um, just give it a name. So I'm gonna call this Tech Shots. I'm just importing some oldish um, shots that I happen to have on the hard drive as a mixture of different formats shot on a mixture of different devices, which might be useful. Um, these are currently on my J drive folder, but I'm just going to create a project called Tech Shots. I'm going to, by default, it wants to stick it in the pictures. By all means, stick it on your desktop or stick it anywhere you like. Normally, I'd put it probably on a removable drive, but maybe after using it, unless you've got a USB 3 device, uh, you don't want it to be drawing, driving uh, and drawing images and previews from a remote network or slow drive. Uh, people who do this professionally tend to have two hard drives in their machine and one is often just for storage and one is often for cache. Some people that I know have two SSD arrays and then they have a larger, slower hard drive which they use for storage. Uh, so they would use one SSD for the project while working on it, one to run the operating system, and then the other one to back up and archive things on at the end. So I'm calling it Tech Shots. Uh, it's just going to give me some options for when it wants to back up. I'm just going to leave these. Um, you can see at the moment because I'm exiting, it's asking me if I want to back up the other thing. I'm just going to say skip for now. Normally I'd hit back up. You can see now that the catalog at the top here is the one I created, techshots.lightroomcatalog.lrcat. And I'm ready basically to import. You can see at the moment we've got no photographs in this catalog. There's nothing in a, in a previous import, etc. We have no folders. Uh, there are no collections. You can see that you can publish to different devices and social media and other platforms, etc. So all this is currently blank. Okay. Just close up the navigator for the moment. So first thing you'll note, um, if you've launched this in the labs, it will probably bring up a tutorial to show you this. You have your tabs along the top, first thing to note. First thing is the library. This is basically your catalog, your photos, your collection. Okay, so it's everything including the rubbish, and this is where you import, put in things like keywords. You can do some quick development settings if you knew everything had been shot in a certain camera and it has a particular issue could batch apply it to the entire volume then once we've got our images sorted named etc we then move into the develop module once you have chosen your images within your library selected the ones you want you can go into the development module make adjustments on an individual basis or by a batch so you could put a color correction on a whole set of photos or you could adjust one individually there are a number of things we'll come through this later. And this is basically where you push and process and choose all the right settings for the individual images. There is also an, a map feature. Now, personally, I don't use this, but it does allow you, particularly if you have a large collection of photos and you use a single 
collection you can see on any fo phone camera which has GPS which is many of them now you can actually locate photos by location so if you knew you would taken some on a holiday to Hong Kong for instance you could shortlist by location uh, the next tab is to make a book so we've got a book here you can create books from a set of templates you can make photo books you can also save as PDF etc plus I think you can do EPUB and other things um, you can use this it's quite powerful um, particularly for layouts and things personally I don't like any of the templates but then I am a, a designer with a bit of a background in editorial design so they don't really hack it for me and you can also see that they will try and sell you um, a printed version of the book so you're talking 40 bucks here I don't know why it's set to US settings at the moment but you can change that presumably within here uh, next one along is a slideshow if you were sharing the photos or creating a slideshow uh, for an event for example this takes a lot of the pain out of that you can put your slide transitions in there are some fairly sophisticated things again if you've ever used the likes of iPhoto it's a similar kind of thing my phone does this stuff nowadays I can take a collection of photos in one geographic location and it will generate this for me so again I barely ever touch this I tend to do stuff in After Effects if I want something a bit special but there are some powerful templates within it uh, the one that I do use is print this is both for printing your I'm just going to turn off the tips but you'll get these all the time these are basically for printing off one-off prints or contact sheets which is what I use them for in particular so contact sheets is here um, you could print six photos by you know um, by seven columns miniature thumbnails with the names on so that you can sort through your photos uh, manually and sort of old school mimics the old-fashioned contact sheets where you literally used to put your negatives on a piece of film and expose it so it's kind of digital equivalent of that. It's really good for sort of stop taking of images. If you have an event and you take a load of pictures, uh, this is really powerful. I've seen commercial companies use this at events where they effectively automate this process and each image has a unique ID and they are outputting these on a printer, sticking them on a wall and then you can buy photos of yourself at the event. Um, and it can be fully streamlined. This package is a very powerful package. So you can also put together things like picture packages. You can have a 4x3 along with two 3x2s and some passport size photos, etc. All into a pre-made template which you can save. So again, like school photos, you choose what it is you want and boom, it prints it straight off onto the printer. What I tend to do is I don't tend to print directly from here very often. Uh, what I tend to do is make PDFs of things and I tend to output and export using sort of manual settings. But I do use it for contact sheets and rather than print to a physical printer, I tend to print it to PDF rather than to printer, which is an option along with printing to JPEG. Um, the people that I output my photos to professionally have their own color profile, which I tend to use in Photoshop to make sure that what comes off the printer exactly matches my calibrated monitor and final thing is a web profile so again you have a slideshow but this is if you want to build a web gallery if you had an event and you want to share photos there are a load of preset templates down here and you can create an interactive kind of web preview thing if you don't know how to build a website you can put in your server details or free space you can literally get it to build you um, a gallery and it can even have password access etc so again not really useful so much for our students but useful perhaps for the amateur very useful sometimes for photographers who aren't web designers and want to be able to quickly put up a gallery with this process with so we're mainly going to focus on these first two features okay and that's the general overview of, of Lightroom um, what I will say is that these palettes that come in the side if you are working on a laptop or something with a if you don't have a massive monitor these little things can be tabbed in and out left and right okay and there are also shortcuts this gives you a bit more space as you can see so if you want to be able to see your thumbnails in here while sorting it's quite easy to do you can just lock them on and off there are shortcuts as well for each um, I also use a, a technique called lights out uh, which used to be 
L on the keyboard, which dims the screen apart from images. Obviously, I don't have images at the moment. Takes it to completely black. This is great when you're just wanting to look at the images without the interface clutter. So L just type cycles you through lights out mode. There's sort of a halfway house where everything's a bit dim. You can still make changes, but the, the image will stand out much more brightly as my cursor is. Hit L again, it goes to complete black and back. I think you can customize that if you don't want it on black. Okay, so that's a basic overview of the interface. Um, we're going to stop this and I'll start a new recording and show you how to import on the next recording.